Well, May 1st is National Religious Brothers Day, and uh, we welcome to This is the Day, uh, Jesuit brother and the Vatican astronomer. Thank you so much for being with us, Brother Guy. It's a delight to be here. Um, you're a native of Detroit, from what I understand. Uh, we're Catholic TV ears on the Archdiocesan Station there. Tell us about your time there and um, how it led to your vocation. Uh, in a lot of ways. Um, I grew up at the time when Detroit was really booming in the 50s and 60s. And, you know, I started kindergarten when Sputnik went up. And I finished high school at the University of Detroit High School the year that people landed on the moon. Uh -huh. um, my dad worked for Chrysler. And, of course, that was one of the things in Detroit. Was, <laughs> which car company does your dad work for? <laughs> uh, but I went to a fabulous grade school, Our Lady Queen of Martyrs School. And it was the Sisters of Charity who taught me math and science. It was, of course, uh, you know, the priest of the University of Detroit who also taught chemistry. And I was always raised with science and religion being taught to me by the same people. It never occurred to me that some people might find a conflict. And I was also raised that there was a sense of joy in both. It was fun to be a Catholic. It was fun to be a scientist. And did, did this sort of love of science, did it grow in your formation uh, towards brotherhood? Or did, was that something that came later? Or? Oh, the, the formation to be a brother was a <laughs> was very odd story. I, uh, I was a freshman at a different college than MIT. I'll leave it at that. And in those days, the local liquor store would deliver to the freshman dorms, even though it wasn't legal. And I was fed up with all these you know, freshman guys who were drinking too much and then ruining their lives, and then they come and pour out their problems on me. And you know, to me, why would you drink that stuff? You could spend that money in chocolate, much more fun. <laughs> but as they're pouring out their problems, first of all, I was bored. And secondly, I would think to myself, you know, life is tough when you're stupid. <laughs> you know, why would you do this? <laughs> and to get out of the freshman dorms, I found a Jesuit priest and said, I want to become a Jesuit. And he answered, well, have you prayed about this? So, you know, I'm 18 years old, who prays? When I did pray, I suddenly realized that being a priest meant being pastoral towards people with problems. Not saying, you know, what do you expect when you're stupid? It's not pastoral. Yeah. It also reminded me that that wasn't what I was good at. I'm, I'm not a people person, I'm a nerd. I was having my most fun hanging out with my nerd friends at MIT, which had a great collection of science fiction. And so I realized then, through prayer, that I did not have a call to be a priest any more than I had a call to be a, a, you know, an NBA player. I can't play basketball. There were certain things I was not given. I had a call to be a nerd. And I spent 20 years of my life as a nerd, getting degrees from MIT, doctoral degree from Arizona, postdoctoral work at Harvard at MIT. It was only when I was approaching 40 years old, and you know, I dated people and that didn't work, and I taught at places and I really enjoyed that, that I was trying to figure out but what do I do with my life? You think by, by 25 you'd know. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. I was nearly 40. Uh. And I thought, well, you know, it worked the last time, so I, I went and prayed. And at that point, out of nowhere came this call. If you were a Jesuit, you could teach, which is what you love. You could do research, which is what you love. You could be with a community of religious people, which is what you love. And I said, but, but I already did this. I already went through this. God doesn't want me to be a priest. Priests aren't the only way that you can serve God or that you can be a part of a religious order. By being a brother, I would be supporting the order in what they do, providing them the scientific education and expertise that, that I could bring to them, but also find a place in a community where I was a member and didn't have to do it all. Okay, I'm not, you know, a person you would come to with your problems, but I know people who are. Yeah. Okay, I'm not someone who is going to give you an inspiring homily, but I know people who are. And in the meantime, I can do the nerd work. I can do the science. I can provide what I can do. This is why we have a church, because we all have different gifts. Yeah. And this gift of being a brother happened to fit exactly the gifts that God gave me. That's great. As soon as I arrived in the Jesuit order, there was not just a sense that I was happy. I'd been a happy person before, but a sense that I was where I belonged. 
a sense of contentment. That's great. Uh, you know, we don't have too much time left, and I, this might I, be I a talk too much. I know this might be a loaded <laughs> question, but is there? A, I know that you you split time between Arizona and and um, Castel Gandolfo, but uh, is there a typical day for you as as a Vatican astronomer? A pretty typical day gets me up early in the morning. Um, I say my hour of prayer sometimes between six and seven. I tell people I say the rosary before I get up, not because I'm pious, but because it gives me another 10 minutes before I realize, yeah, time to get up. <laughs> but, but it's a great way to start the day. Uh, I'll work in my office until 10. Everything stops at 10 for coffee. You know, this is Italy. We have a community prayer together before our big meal of the day in Rome, which is about 1.30. I'll have an afternoon nap, which charges me up for an afternoon when I can go back so that it's, you know, in Rome, it's the evening. In America, it's daytime, so I get to do emails. And then we have mass together as a community at 715. And to me, that's the high point of the day. Uh, you don't realize, because I'm not saying mass, it doesn't mean that mass isn't important. But rather, to me, it's a focal point that becomes all the more important because I know I can't do it for myself. Yeah. And no one can do it for themselves. Well, thank you so much, Brother Guy, for talking with us. Uh, if people want to find out about the um, um, Vatican uh, and the uh, observatory, where would they go to? We've got uh, a blog site okay. called The Catholic Astronomer. Just okay. Google The Catholic Astronomer, and you get a sense of the work we're doing, the people we work with. It's not just the, the Jesuits at the observatory, but our colleagues and our friends talking about how astronomy is a way to bring us to the Lord, okay. the Creator. Thank you, Brother Guy. We're going to go back to the rest of This is the Day.